ways to solve quadratic equations. So there's four ways. Factory, completing the square, inspection using a graph or table, taking the square root, which is algebraically, and then the quadratic formula. So we're going to start with this one over here, x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0, and we're going to use the method of factory. So x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0. And I prefer to use the Jalik method, but that's not for everyone, but we're going to use Jalik method in this. Actually, no, we're not. We're not going to do that. So if I just look at it, I know that the factors of negative 7 are going to be the factors of negative 7 are going to be 7, negative 1, negative 7, 1. And I'm just going to stop there because I know that 7 and negative 1, they add up to 6, which is what our B term is. Our B term should be the, the, should be the sum of our two factors of our C term, ax squared plus bx plus c, the quadratic, the main quadratic, the quadratic formula. So then we're going to do... Um, not that quadratic, the quadratic standard equation. So 7 and negative 1 are our factors. So then x plus 7 times x plus 1 equals 0. Christ. And then if we use the zero product property, we know that x can either equal 7, negative 7 or negative 1. And that's the solution for how to use factory. And then we've done this equation already. So the next we're going, so... Here's our equation. Just to, if you need to pause for a minute, write it all down. That's fine. And then, so next, we're going to do the quadratic formula using this equation. So the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So then we're just going to use substitution. So x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 4 times 2 times 1. All over now 2 times 2 is 4. So then x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 8. And then yes 44 times 2 is 8 so that's 8 negative 8 all over 4, so then x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 41, 49 minus 8, all over 4, 49, 41 is a prime number, so we can't simplify that any further, it's a prime number, so then our basically our answer is just x equals negative 7 plus or minus, so we can either add the square root of 41 or subtract it from negative 7, square root of 41, all over 4. And that's our answer. Take a minute to write that down if you need to. Moving on. Alright, so we've done quadratic formula. We've done this one. Now we're going to do taking the square root algebraically using x squared equals 75. So first we're going to square root both sides. The square root of x squared equals x. Square root of 75 equals, we don't know. So now we're going to do that. So the factors of 75, we know there's a 5 in there. Times, not 5, I'm sorry. A 3 times 25. It's 25, it's 25, it's 25, 75. And then we're going to use the factors of 25 are 5 and 5. And because we have a pair, we're going to put that on the outside in front of the radical. So it's going to be 5 times the square root of 3, because that one does not have a pair, so it goes inside the radical. So then x equals 5 times the square root of 3, but the square root of 3 is either negative or positive, because a negative times a negative is a positive, but a positive times a positive is also a positive. <coughs> so our x is equal to 5 times positive square root of 3 or 5 times negative square root of 3. So take a minute to write that down. Moving on. Okay, so we've done taking the square root using these. 
So now we're going to do inspection, not inspection, we're going to be completing the square with x squared plus 16x <laughs> plus 89 equals 0. So we write that out. All right, so when we do completing the square, we put, we do a parentheses, we put the x squared and the b term, the bx inside, so 16x. Now, c is going to be square root, it's going to be half of b, which is 8 <laughs> squared, so 64, so plus 64. So then we had plus 89 on the outside. Now we're going to subtract 64 because we, if you add it in and then you take it out, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to go, it's going to eventually factor out to zero. So if we add 64 and then we subtract 64, it's that the 64 was never there. Minus 64. So then we have x plus 8 squared plus 25. We're going equals zero. We can't forget that because we're solving. So then we're going to square root both sides. Square root of zero is zero, obviously. So then this side is x plus 8 plus 25, well, not plus 25, that's ridiculous. Nope, not 20, not square root, not 25. The square root, because the square root is the whole side, square root of 25 is 5, so plus 5. So x plus 8 plus 5, so we're going to subtract 8 and 5 from both sides, so that x equals negative 13. Perfect. Okay. But then, also, it could be negative 13, or you could also have x minus, oh, minus, no, it's only one answer, right? Plus or minus 5. All right, okay, so plus or minus 5. So, at 8 plus 5 is, on the other side, would be negative 13. No, 8 minus 5, on the, so that 8 minus 5 is 3, so that'd be negative 3. So, negative 13 or negative 3. Take a minute to pause, write that down. <laughs> Alrighty. Moving on. All right. So last we're going to do inspection. And I just have my handy dandy graph right here. I'm going to slap that on there. Slap that graph on here. Okay. So we're going to be doing inspection with a graph. We're doing a graph. Graph. With x times x plus 5. Now that's going to be x squared, I'm just going to write it way up here, x squared plus 5x. So we know that when we graph it, it's the parent function x squared plus 5x. So we're just going to like a little bit of, imp so we know it's going to be parent function. So let's put in 1 for x, so we know our first point going to be on the 1 right here x squared plus 5x. So 1 squared is 1 plus 5x is 5 times 1 is 5. So then we got to add them together and get 6. So our first value is 6. Now if we put in 0, which I'm we put in 0, so 0 squared is 0 plus 5 times 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 0. zero. And then we're going to put in negative 1. So the negative 1 squared is 1. And then 5 times negative 1 is negative 1, is negative 5, so then 1 minus 5 is negative 4, 2, 3, 4, I don't know where I'm going with this, okay, <laughs> so then we're going to put in, my, I suspect this might be our vertex because it's going down, we know it's going to be a positive parabola because the leading coefficient a is going to be positive, that's positive 1, so then let's put in negative 2, so then, Negative 2 squared is 4, and then 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, so 4 minus 10 is negative 6, then negative 3, I think, I think group, we're almost there guys, almost there. So then this one up is actually 9, it is 10, that's confusing. Okay, so negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9, and then 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, negative 15 plus 9 is negative 6. So our vertex is going to be about, it's going to be right here is going to be our coordinate and then we're just going to, and because, because it's going to be equal, our points are going to be equal distances from the line of reflection which is on the vertex, we know that our zero value, our zero or our solution is going to be two point, two and a half points away, 
So on this side, so if we go two and a half points this way, one and a half, what, half, one and a half, two and a half, we know that our point's gonna be on the line right here. So then, just kinda like that. So we know that our solutions are going to be zero and negative five, so then x equals zero and negative five. Thank you.